morning, everyone. Good, morning. good to see you all here this morning. It is truly good to gather together once again in our Father's house. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to invite you to join me in reading our life verse for July from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 6 and verse 31. Let's read these words together. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I don't even need to really look at the page anymore. I don't think you all do either. This is something we've learned since we were very, very little. But it's something that we need to really be mindful of, especially in the times we live today. Uh, I don't know if you saw it or not, but our new hand sanitizing machine is in. It's mounted on the wall just inside the, or just in the narthex there. So please um, feel free to use it as you need to. Um, and, and I want to thank Bob for getting that put into place for us. Of course, we'll continue to correspond back and forth with the deacons each week uh, to see what we can do better. Um, you notice that the placement of the camera has changed, and that was due to the fact that a lot of you, fortunately, contacted me last week and let me know that listening to the service at home was difficult. Because, uh, the because of the volume. We're working on making it as perfect as we can get it. So please just be patient. Uh, we think we've got it in a better place for right now. Uh, so again, for those of you that are not here, let us know, please. All right. uh, just a reminder, we're not going to be doing any handouts for a while. So please keep an eye on your emails because I'll be sending out emails uh, with updates. Dana will be sending them out as well. Uh, whenever we need to. So please just be sure that you are um, keeping an eye on your emails and, and uh, uh, if there's anything that you need to know, please get in touch with either Dana or myself and we'll be more than happy to keep you up to date. Hopefully you're receiving your highlights each week. If you haven't been getting them, please again let one of us know and we'll make sure that you are on the list and uh, that we have your address correct. That helps a lot too. Um, I've already talked about the sound. Oh, one more re reminder. Next week, um, immediately following worship, I mean, like, after we've sung the last hymn, we're going to have a very brief uh, quarterly business meeting. Uh, it will be very brief, and that's something that will go out in, a, uh, in an email this week. Um, the information that, that we're going to be talking about at that meeting will go out in an email this week, so please be uh, looking for that. The meeting will be brief. Uh, what we'll probably do is just, I'll have you all just stay in your seats and we'll just conduct the meeting. I'll have Bob and Donald come up here, just conduct the meeting from up here. Um, we can continue to film that as well. No, we probably don't need to. That's just a business meeting. That's just for the church. So that's not to be broadcast. We'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. It's a learning curve, folks. It's a sharp curve. Well, no, it's a long curve. It's a long curve. So we're doing the best we can. Hang in there. Just be patient. God's got it. God's got it. And that's that's going to be that's going to be our guide for. Well, it should always be our guide, but especially going to be our guide during these times. Let's go ahead and start worshiping. Gracious God, your word is a lamp unto our feet, and it is a light for our path. We gather as your people, the church, to be a beacon to our community and beyond. Father, we ask you to open our ears to hear your word and use us to fulfill your will. These things we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Victor. Good morning, y'all. Uh, if you see seated and come along with us to be here and to worship.
Hey, Bob, I think you got these speakers fixed. Because I don't have my hearing aids in, and it's coming through loud and clear. Thank you. See, each week, we get a little bit better. We get a little bit better. It's time to pray. It's always time to pray, but it's time for us to pray together now, to open our hearts and our minds to God, to share with Him those those concerns and those joys that we have in our lives. I know joys are hard to find right now, but if we look, if we really look, we will see that there are still many things to rejoice about in our world today. I'm going to ask you to continue to pray for the church and pray for uh, pray for us as we uh, move forward in sending out our worship service. I ask you to pray for our nation, pray for justice, pray for healing, pray for peace, pray for our leaders. You know, there, there's something about prayer, especially when we're praying for our leadership, whether you agree with your leadership or not, if we pray for them, if we pray for one another, God will hear our prayers and he will respond and he will answer because he always hears what's on our hearts. And that's what we should be praying. We should be praying not only with our lips, but with our hearts as well. So I want to invite you to take a moment. Uh, hopefully you all received an email from me this morning with a, a new updated continuous prayer list. So please uh, keep that handy. Um, all the folks on there are, are in need of prayer today. So please keep that, keep that list handy. Take a moment now and lift your prayers to God. He is waiting to hear from each and every one of you. Let's pray together. Father God, we, your children, humbly bow before you this day with grateful hearts. Even in the midst of the turmoil in our world, we are thankful for all the blessings that you continue to bestow upon us. We thank you for calling us into your house and allowing us the opportunity once again to hear and to study your holy word. We know that there are many of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are not allowed to worship with the freedom we have. And we pray for each and every one of them. We pray for the missionaries throughout the world, many who are supported by our church and other churches within our state. We pray for them as they seek to bring your holy word to areas which otherwise would not even know who you are. Father, we pray that one day all of your people will come to know you, know you as their Heavenly Father, and that they will be able to praise you as we do. We are all on a journey of faith, O oh Lord, seeking to grow in our knowledge and our understanding of what it means to be devoted followers of Jesus Christ. There are days when our when you feel so close to us and our faith is so strong. But there are also days, Holy One, when we feel lost and alone. Your word reminds us over and over again that you are steadfast. So we know that even on the days when we feel separated from you, it is because of our own making. Instill in us a discipline that encourages us to dive deeper into your word not just on Sunday mornings, but every day. Remind us to always seek you first. And as we grow in our faith, may we also grow in our works for you. As we do each week, oh God, we pray for our church family. We ask a special blessing on our brothers and sisters 
who are struggling with physical, emotional, and spiritual challenges. We may not know what each person's battle is, but Father, you do. We know that you can only you can bring restoration and wholeness to each one of them and to each one of us. We pray that that day, Father, that day when we as a family can join together here in our sanctuary to worship and to fellowship. And now we pray, come Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the, the fire and the passion that we had when we first came to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. May our obedience to you be in accordance with your desire so that our journey to be faithful will be pleasing unto you. All these things we pray as we join our hearts and our voices together as one, praying as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Y'all remain seated and stand and come along with us for the provide us in heaven.
God's word comes to us this morning from the book of Acts, chapter 2. We'll be reading verses 42 through 47. Hear the word of the Lord. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. These words should be familiar to you. We just talked about them a few weeks ago at Pentecost when we discussed the, the beginning of the new church, the birth of the new Christian church. I think it's important that we remember as we begin a new part of the life of Stockton Memorial Baptist Church. I think it's important that we remember and that we follow the model that has already been put into place for us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
sit here and we let them play for the next 20 minutes or so, huh? I've been listening to you guys all morning long. I mean that in all sincerity. I'm tired. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed that. I've missed that. I really have. Um, and Katie, we've missed you too. And we're very, very glad that you're back here with us this morning. Um, it, it really does my heart good to see you here. Because this is where you're supposed to be. And that's really what I want to talk about this morning. I know it's hard. It's hard for each one of us. But the decision to come here this morning, to, to be together, I mean, as soon as y'all walked in the door, the whole, the whole atmosphere in the building changed. We have learned so much about ourselves and about humanity in the last, what, four months it's been now? We've seen the best of humanity, and unfortunately, we've seen a lot of the worst. There are so many heroes, and I, is heroes gender specific, or am I supposed to say heroines as well? There are so many good things that have come out of this horrible experience. They really are. I mean, normally we wait until whatever the situation is to be gone. And then we look back and we went and we'll go, you know, some good stuff came out of that. But I'm telling you right now, good stuff is coming out of what we're going through right now. We're not waiting until it's over. There's so much good coming out. I... As you all know, my sister is a nurse, and, and had, or she's a retired nurse, although I don't, think any, I don't think there's such a thing as a retired nurse. I don't think there's such a thing as a retired school teacher. I don't think there's such a thing as a retired pastor, although I keep hoping that there is somewhere down the road. But over the last six months, well, over the last eight months, especially for me, I have learned so much about how strong and how brave uh, so many of our medical people are. And it's not just the doctors and the nurses. I mean, it's, 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 it's the person that, that brings the tray to your hospital bed. It's, it's the person that, that helps get you in and out of you know, the, the, the wheelchair or the, or the stretcher or whatever it is. There are so many brave heroes and heroines, if I'm supposed to, out there. Everything okay? Right. There's a lot of good going on, folks. Kathy, how many masks have you made? A lot. A lot, right? Okay. A couple hundred? Four. Probably. Ruby, Ruby's done a whole mess of them. There are people who are doing things for other people that they normally would not have done. That's the good news. That's what's coming out of this. It's not all the stuff you see on the, news, on, on the news. It's not all the stuff you read about in the paper. If anybody even reads the paper anymore, read about online, whatever it is. Yes, that's happening. And I'm not saying there aren't bad things going on, but there's so much good that can come out of this. I've told you this before. You've heard me say it many, many times. I believe that we learn from all of our experiences, the good ones and the not so good ones. What happens is when we don't learn from our experiences, when we don't learn from our past, and we continue to repeat those same mistakes. The definition of insanity is what? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. We can't do that anymore, people. If, if we've learned nothing else, we can't learn that we go on as 
we have in the past. We have to make some changes. I have gotten so far off the track now. Give me a minute to get back on. Many things have and will continue to change. But many things will also remain the same. And that's the basis for my message this morning. In all the years that I've been a Christian, and especially in the last 20 plus years that I've been in ministry, so often I've heard people say things like, I don't need to go to church. I can worship God on the golf course. I can worship God when I'm out on my boat. I can worship God when I'm at the beach. I can worship God anytime, anywhere I want. And that is true. And that is true. I can, I can, stay, home. I can stay home in my pajamas and worship God. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And I have a feeling, judging by what I'm seeing in your eyes, that several of you have been doing that. And that's okay. It's true, we can't worship God anywhere, anytime. Why? Because God is everywhere. I love the signs that, that Dana found for us. I don't know if you saw it over the, the, the sanitizer thing. So, sanitize your hands and say your prayers because Jesus in terms are everywhere. Something along those lines. I love it. I love it. We can worship, we can worship God anytime. You've heard people say that. You've heard people say, I don't need to go to church to worship God. Maybe you've even said it to yourself. Maybe you've even thought it to yourself. But there's a danger in that type of attitude about going to church. There are still so many churches here, right here in Chesterfield County, in 2020, with all the technology and all the abilities and all the knowledge that we have, there are still churches right here in Chesterfield that are not worshiping because they can't. They don't have the ability or they don't have the funding or they don't have the, the technical know-how that, that we have right here in this room. And my heart breaks for those people. Not because they can't worship. They can worship, but they're missing the fellowship. And that's what, that's what I was talking about. When y'all came in this morning, the whole mood in the building changed. And it became church. I understand. I understand and it's true that the primary reason for church, the primary purpose of church is to worship God. But we all know it goes so much deeper than that. There's a bond that develops when we, and I use, the, I, when I use the term, when we do church, okay? Make sure you see the air quotes. When we do church, there's a bond that develops. And I've always referred to that bond as a family. And, it, you know, it's just us, okay? We are who we are. And what you see is what you get. One thing that I've, I've I guess I've always known it, I've always known it about myself, is that I am, I am very transparent. Not, not that you can see through me, but I'm very transparent. What you see is what you get. I've never tried to put on airs. I, don't, I, I, I really don't know how. And, and that's part of who we are as a family. Do we always get along? You're supposed to go like this, but it's not true. We know that. We have our disagreements. We have our, our times when we, when we may not always agree on everything. But what happens? It's the same thing that happens with you, with your family. My sister right now, I don't know what's going on with her. She's just gone right off the deep end, but she's still my sister. I mean, she's crazy as a loon, but don't you dare say that, because she's my sister. I can say that. I, I think, I'm looking at you all, and y'all are going, yep, know exactly what he's talking about. I got the crazy one, too. Yes, you do. What's the sign? It says, one in three people are crazy. Look to your left and look to your right. If they look normal, <laughs> a 
Okay, I'm being a little bit too transparent now, right? <laughs> I will always be grateful. I will always be thankful that we were able to continue our worship, albeit remotely. But there's something special about coming together again. When we stop meeting as the church, we lose so very much. So the question for us today is simply this. Does the church matter? Why does the church matter? With all of the technology that we have, with the ability that we now know that we have to, to broadcast our services and to watch them from the comfort of our home, why do we still get up on Sunday morning and get dressed and drive to church? Why do we do it? Why does church matter? It matters because of you. The scripture I read this morning from the book of Acts gives us a lot of insight into the mindset of the early Christians and their attitude toward worship. But there are four other scriptures that I want to share with you this morning, and they're brief, and they're scriptures that you've all read and you all know them. But I think they really highlight the importance of the fellowship of believers. First reading shows up right in the very beginning of your Bible. In the book of Genesis, in the second chapter, verse 18, reads like this. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. The Lord God said, it is not right for man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. Our God is not a far off God. Although sometimes we treat him that way. Sometimes we treat him like he's, he's off in heaven somewhere and we're here all on our own. A lot of the world still believes that. He's so far away. How can he possibly know what's going on in our little part of the world, in our little part of creation, let alone in my life? But our God is not a far off God. Our God is a God of relationship. From the very beginning, he always has been and always was and always will be a God who chooses, chooses to be available to all of his creation. He wants to be in unity with his creation. Remember, even before chapter 2 in Genesis, early, earlier, early in Genesis, God spoke into being. How, did everything, how was everything created? Anybody remember? God spoke, and it happened. God spoke into being all of creation, all of the animals, all of the plants, all of the everything. And he did it so that we could coexist with him and with each other. God is a God of relationships. He made all of his creation to be in relationship with him and with one another. You'll notice that, and I've always thought this was very interesting when I started really studying, really studying the Bible. God created everything in order, too. It's not that he created everything, but he created it in order. Before he created the animals, he created food for the animals to eat. Think about that. He's a God of order, and he's a God of relationships. All right, next passage of Scripture, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 and 26. This is what they say. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing of water through the word. Does the church matter? What I just read tells us that yes, the church matters, the community, the fellowship of believers matters. It was so important to Jesus that he was willing to be beaten and tortured and hung on a cross and die. 
so that we could exist. Christ died for our sins individually, yes. But the fellowship of believers was never meant to be independent of Christ or of one another. I don't think anybody ever understood this better than the Apostle Paul. Read through all of Paul's letters. It, I, I've known people in the past that, that when I've taught blocks of lessons on the book of Paul, I actually had one very good friend of mine who said, I won't be taking those classes. I don't like Paul. <laughs> I said, whoa, okay. She said, no, I don't like Paul because Paul doesn't think very highly of women. And I said, well, I think I can show you that that's wrong, but if you don't want to take the classes, you don't have to. She took the classes. And she found out what I was talking about. Paul loved mankind because Paul was loved by God. Anyway, got off track again. I don't know how that happens. But Paul understood the importance of the church, because look at all of his letters. Every single one of Paul's letters talks about the body of Christ. Not the physical body of Christ, but the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, that's all, I mean, basically all of 1 Corinthians 12. He talks about how we are all part of the body of Christ. We were never created, we were never meant to be self-sufficient. We were never meant to be separated from one another, but to be a single body made up of many parts all working together for the glory of God. Well, what did Jesus himself say about the importance of the community of faith? In the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 20, our Lord assured his followers with this promise. For where two or three are gathered in my name, go ahead and have your mask, you can finish it for me. I am there with you. I am there with them. Now, I don't want to take, I, I have a problem with people who just grab verses out of the Bible and take them out of context, and I don't want to do that. So I will tell you this, when Jesus spoke those words, he was instructing his followers on how to restore a believer who had sinned and fallen away. This wasn't a section so much about worship as it was about accountability. And really, that is part of worship. Accountability is very much a part of worship. It's about lifting up a brother or sister who has fallen, who has sinned. It's about saying to them, what you have done is wrong, and I love you. Let me help you get back on the right track again. Let me help you get back on the path again. The emphasis is about community. Jesus points out that it's not about you, it's about we. It's not about me, it's about us. I don't know where this came from. I don't remember if I read it somewhere or if God gave it to me. I and me become us and we when Jesus gathers with us. I and me become us and we when Jesus gathers with us. And every time we gather, he promises to be with us. Why do Victor and Tony and Dana and I, why do your Sunday school teachers work so hard to put together a meaningful worship or a meaningful Sunday school class each week? We don't do it for us. We don't do it for you, really. Everything that we do, fellas, back me up on this. Everything that we do is for the glory of God. Everything that you do 
should be for the glory of God. I'll give you one that wasn't included. Colossians 3.23. We do it because we understand that when two or three are gathered together that Jesus is with us. Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working as if working for the Lord, not for human masters. I want you to think about that for just a minute. In fact, read it tonight when you go home. Colossians 3.23. Write it down. Work as if you are working for the Lord. When you're out there cutting the grass, cut the grass for the Lord. Does that sound weird? Who put the grass there? Who waters the grass for you? Cut the grass as if you're doing it for the Lord. Whatever it is you're working on, do it as for the Lord. Let me give you two short readings from Paul, and maybe those will help answer the question, why does church matter? Romans chapter 1, verse 11. Paul wrote these words to the persecuted church. I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. And then in Philippians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, he wrote, It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in chains or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. There's a couple more good ones you might want to write them down again or watch this later on again. Paul didn't say, I'd love to see you. Paul didn't say, I want to see you. What did he say? I long to see you. He ached to see these people again. Let me ask you this. Have you been waiting to come back to church? Or has there been a longing inside of you to gather again? Last passage of scripture I want to look at today is in the book of Hebrews. As many of you know, Hebrews is one of my favorite books. Because, and, and I, I don't know why, when I studied the book of Hebrews years ago in, in one of my first Bible studies, I found that just about every chapter, the very first verse was a sermon. I mean, it was, it was just a great sermon. Anyway, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. The writer says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching, and as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. The Lord commands us to physically gather together. Not just to be a member of the church, not just to be in the directory, not just to have our name on the rolls, not just to show up on Christmas and Easter, but to be present Physically present, week after week, and month after month, and year after year. Not neglecting to meet together, as some are in the habit of doing. All of us know somebody who will tell you forever that they are a member of such and such a church. Ask them what the pastor's name is. Ask what the pastor's last sermon was all about. And then you'll find out how much of a member of the church, a member of the fellowship, they truly are. Ask them what they've got coming up. Well, maybe not right now, because there's not a whole lot going on outside of worship and outside of study. But find out. Let me share a story with you, and then I'll let you go. 
This is an old story, and I may have shared it with you already, but it's, it's worth repeating, especially today. A member of a certain church had been attending regularly and suddenly stopped going. Nobody seemed to know why. He just stopped showing up. After a couple of Sundays had passed, the concerned pastor of the church decided to visit the man. It was a bitter cold evening, and the pastor found the man sitting at home in front of a roaring fireplace. Assuming the reason for the visit, the man invited the pastor to join him and led him to a chair in front of the fire. Other than their initial greeting, not a word passed between the two men. After a few minutes of silence, the pastor took the fire tongs and picked out a single ember from among the logs and placed it on the far corner of the hearth. And then he sat back down in his chair, the host watching all that was doing with a look of curiosity on his face. Within a few minutes, the glowing ember became dark and diminished. There was a brief glow and then the lone ember turned to cold. The pastor again reached down with the tongs, and he carefully picked up the darkened ember and placed it back amongst the logs in the middle of the fire. The ember quickly began to glow once again, surrounded by the other bright embers. As the pastor stood to leave, the host grasped his hand and said, Thank you for that sermon. I'll see you in church on Sunday. Does the church matter? The answer is a resounding yes. The church matters because you matter. Because each one of you matter. You matter not only to God, but you matter to yourselves and you matter to one another. I know how easy it is, trust me. I know how easy it is to pull the covers over your head and say, not this Sunday. I know how easy it is to say, it's raining, or oh, it's cold. Not this Sunday. I just don't feel like going to church. But I also know, just as sure as I know, that Jesus Christ gave his life for each one of us as individuals. He also died for the church. We were never created to be scattered or to be solitary. And I think that's why this whole forced situation that we're in now, this, this, this self-quarantining and social distancing, I think that's why it's, it's especially hard for us as Christians. Because we're not used to this. This is not, this, this is right. Yeah, you don't know how badly I wanted to get up and hug both of them after listening to that beautiful song this morning. I'm sure you did too. You did when you started clapping, and I appreciate that. I know they did. But you don't do it for them. You do it for him. There's something very special about being here, about being reunited to one another as the church. I pray that we never lose the longing to come together to worship God. Don't succeed and hold on with us on the footsteps of Jesus.
That's the first time I've ever heard that. I don't know how he does this. Honestly, I do not send Victor a copy of my manuscript. All I send him is the verses that I'm going to read and the title of the perspective title of the sermon. And he comes and he finds these amazing hymns that are just fit perfectly. You've heard two sermons this morning. That was the second one. Those are our instructions. We are to follow the footsteps of Jesus wherever they take us. Wherever they take us. And when we follow his footsteps and people follow ours, then we will all be together in that body of Christ. So I invite you now to go out into the world, share the lessons that you have learned this morning. Share with everyone the importance of being part of a church family, of a fellowship. The importance not only to ourselves, but even more primary, the importance of being in relationship with and for our loving God. Go now in God's, with God's love, God's strength, and God's peace in your heart. Go and be the body of Christ to the world. Amen.